Welcome to Sunday School Time. This is for Sunday, September 25th, 2022. And I don't know if you noticed, but the background that I'm recording from today is a little different. I came to Atlanta with my daughter, Caitlin, for the weekend. She's attending a conference. And she asked me a few weeks ago if I'd be interested in coming with her. And I said, absolutely. You always go when your kids ask you to go somewhere. So, beautiful hotel room. I'm working from here um, today and tomorrow and, and just really enjoying myself. I'll get to spend some time with her in the evenings, and that's always good. Well, I want to talk to you today about being contented. Now, contentment means we're happy in our situation. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're, the situation is always perfect, but it means we're happy in it. And I'll explain what I mean in a few minutes. But I want you to think about when you blow bubbles, when, you know, soap bubbles, right? And you try to catch them, they disappear very quickly. Or when you eat cotton candy. Oh, I love cotton candy. It's one of my favorite things at carnival time, at festival time. Um, but when you eat cotton candy, it goes away so fast in your mouth. It doesn't last at all. And sometimes we go after things in this world that don't last. And God wants us to pursue things that will give us true happiness, true contentment. Well, we're going to start today by reading some verses in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And we're going to start with verse eight, 6 and go through verse 8. So listen to this. It says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. So the idea of being content or happy or settled, maybe is a good word, is important, but sometimes it's very challenging. Being content is not always the same as being happy, but it, it's really more like being at peace and that goes above just our natural feelings. Um, we can be content about very simple things, even if things are hard in our lives, and we might not feel like everything is just right. So I want you to think about the things that you're thankful for. I'm thankful for my daughter, Caitlin, and for this time with her. I'm thankful for all of my children. I'm thankful that Courtney had a wonderful wedding a few weeks ago. I'm very thankful for my husband who loves me very much and he takes really good care of me. I'm so thankful for my church family, for the joy and the laughter that they bring me. I'm thankful for you guys and for all of your gifts and your talents that you bring. I'm grateful for our youth and our college students. I'm grateful for my music friends, all of the choir members and and Val and Dr. Dan. And boy, am I grateful for that group of us that helped get us all through the pandemic isolation time. I'm very thankful for Pastor Steve and his leadership of us. I'm also thankful that I have a good home, that I have a wonderful job, and that my health is pretty good. That's a lot to be thankful for, and I know you do too. So, what do you see, what kinds of things do you see people wanting to have in this world? They want money? Do they want success? Do they want a better job? Or a nicer car? Or a nicer house? Sometimes I think people put things above as the highest priority. Well, let's go on in 1 Timothy chapter 6. This is verse 9 and 10. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So what's dangerous about chasing after money? Is money bad all the time? Well, of course it isn't. We need money to pay our bills, to buy food, to stay in a safe and happy home. And 
money itself is not the evil. That's not what Paul is saying in this letter to Timothy. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. And we need some money to live, just like I just named. But that's not what brings joy, or especially not salvation. Following after money or following riches can be trouble because earthly wealth doesn't last. Just like those bubbles that I was telling you about earlier or the cotton candy, earthly wealth doesn't last, just like those things. And the trouble with greed is that it's never satisfied. We might think that having more stuff or better things is the answer, but it can take our eyes off of Jesus who is the only one that brings real salvation. So how can we seek Jesus instead of those selfish pursuits? Well, Paul goes on and tells us some more. This is in chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, and this is verses 11 through 16. <clears throat> but you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold to the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God who gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. So Paul gives the antidote to greed, the answer, the, the healing part to greed, and the other side of what we can be and should be pursuing instead of riches and wealth. If we seek after faith and love and righteousness and gentleness and the presence of God, we'll rise above that kind of greed. I don't know if you recognize it, but those are some things we've talked about before. They really parallel the fruit of the Spirit, which the Bible tells us about in Galatians 5.22. Jesus has given his Spirit to live with us and to help us make those positive things become realities in our lives. I'm going to read them to you again. We should seek after faith, love, righteousness, gentleness, and being in the presence of God. Those are all such good things. Christ alone has all the power and all the glory, and he can help us reach for the things that are better than anything that we would reach for here on earth. So let's finish up our, our reading in the scriptures. This is verses 17 through 19. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that, they may take, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Well, have you ever seen anyone who's bragged about wealth? Does it ever make you feel a little uncomfortable to hear them bragging about the money that they have or that they're better than someone? Why do you think they do that? Well, I think it might be because they don't have a lot of self-confidence, that they are kind of looking for self-assurance and, and that's the way they think they can find it. Well, I think it's important that when we are doing well, when we maybe have some abundance that we live in, and I think you've heard me pray that many times, thanking God for the abundance that he gives us. 
I think it's really important, and it says it in this part of this scripture. God tells us to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. When we have good things, we're supposed to share those, whether they be money or um, talent or just kindness and love. I want to tell a story and brag a little bit on my husband. Russ is a very kind and generous person. And almost every time when he goes to Walmart, now he doesn't go to Walmart very often. He usually asks me to go because he doesn't like it. But when he goes to Walmart, almost every time, when he is in the checkout line, he will leave 20 or $40, one or two $20 bills with the cashier and tells them to put that on the bill of the person behind them, behind him. And this cashier is always so surprised by that. And the people that he does that for, it, it's funny, it's almost like God puts the right people behind him in the line so that it's somebody that really needs it. Or they're going through a hard time and they, they need to know that God's really just loving on them today. And I just think he doesn't tell people about it a lot. Every now and then he'll tell me. And I, I've asked him how many times he does that. And he says, well, I think it's every time I go. And he doesn't do it for attention or recognition. Do you know why he does it? He does it because God has blessed us with abundance. And he wants to share that with other people. It's a good deed that makes someone's day. And I know that God is up there saying, well done, Russ. Good job for sharing. I'm really proud of him. And I hope that you'll get a chance to do something like that too. Now, it doesn't have to be money. It can just be a smile or a compliment. I like to tell people that I like their dress if it, if it really strikes my eye or um, that I like their hair. I did that last night when we came to the hotel and Caitlin looked at me real funny. And I said, well, I like her hair. I really liked it and I wanted her to know because maybe she didn't have anybody tell her that today. And so she, maybe she needed to hear it. So that's, I think that's what P, uh, Paul is talking about in this letter to Timothy, that when we have good things, whether that be money or just ourselves and our goodness and our love, we should be sharing this with other people. You know, God doesn't want us to hang on to the things that don't last. He doesn't want us to seek after cotton candy because it doesn't give us good nourishment. He wants us to eat good food. Cotton candy is okay for a treat. I always will have it at strawberry festival time. But I also have to have good nutritional food, right? And money doesn't stick around forever. It fades away. It's uncertain. And sometimes it, you know, like right now, things are more expensive. And so if we place our confidence in money, we might be disappointed. But when we place our confidence in the one who loves us the most, in God who we have, rather than what we have, amazing things can happen. You know, when we promise to give our lives over to God, when we yield to him, he promises to use our lives. God has provided for us and he will continue to provide for us all that we need every single day. Well, let's thank God for what he's given us. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, I thank you for all that you have given us, all the abundance in which we live, the fact that we have a house and food on our table, that we are safe and warm and clothes to wear and food to eat. We're just so grateful. And God, thank you for this passage in Timothy that reminds us not to love that money, but instead to focus on faith and love and gentleness and kindness. Help us to give, not just our money, but our gifts to other people as well. Our gifts of love, our gifts of generosity, our gifts of kindness. Even sometimes, Lord God, help us just give a smile to someone who might need it. 
Lord, we thank you for all that you are and for all that you've done for us. And we ask that you continue to just use us to further your kingdom. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you the next time. Bye.